Hello everyone, have you ever tried creating a product configurator like Tesla in Webflow? Uh, I'm sure you might be finding a lot of tools to kind of make this possible in Webflow. But today in this video, we are going to create a Tesla inspired configurator with Webflow. Let's get started. Sweet. Uh, today we are going to create Tesla style product configurator in Webflow. By product configurator, uh, it means like we are going to create configurator that allows to see like multiple variants of a product like this. So I can basically see multiple variants and uh, you can see that there is a slider as well. So when I click on this, it kind of changes the slider in slider as well. The color also changes. You can see that th this is how it works. I can change the wheel as well. So you can see now the wheel is changing. And uh, then we have interior, just like this. There we go. And I think in interior might be same in some of them. Yeah, interior, we have two options. So let's see if we can create all three of them or just two of them. Uh, then there is, a, there is a checkout feature in here, which we are not going to build today. Maybe in upcoming streams, we will do that. But... What we have is basically a kind of a booking or reserve a reservation of the vehicle. We cannot order it on India right now, Tesla. But uh, the thing is, if I click continue, it will ask me to pay two fifty dollars in order to book it. And then uh, I assume that all the details, like what we selected, will go to a database in the backend. So the whole configurator is working like this, and there are some dynamic values here, uh, multiple dynamic values. Now the thing is, with this session. Uh, I want to create a configurator uh, and I want you to understand the concept behind it and how how it is actually possible in Webflow and how we can create it. Uh, I can think of two ways right now. One of them will be dynamically replacing the whole image. So for example, how Tesla is doing it is they are replacing the whole image. So you can see that if I open it, it's not like cropped images. It's not like tire is separate and then the body chassis is different then the glass is different. No, it's all a single image, a complete image. Uh, this is how it is right now working. Um, yeah, so we are going to do it the same way. The other way could be that the second way, the second possible way could be that we have, you know, cropped graphics, cropped images of the tire, the body, the glass, the interior. And then we are just overlapping them by setting the position absolute. And then we are replacing those things based on the selections, right? So those can be two different ways. Uh, I for, for this particular uh, case, I think replacing the whole image is much better because let's say I am selecting uh, a variant, I can download the full image as well. There can be plus and minus for both of them. Uh, but yeah, for this particular variant, we need to basically have all the variants possible. So for example, I have five different types of paints, two different types of wheel and two interior. So the total number of possible uh, combinations will be five into two into two, which is 20. So I, I will need to basically have 20 combinations uh, and then it will work basically. So without actually uh, like talking about this more, I, I would like to jump into right, right into Webflow and create this structure first. So I, I won't be creating the whole functionality like lease and all. Uh, I really want to focus on configurator. What I'm going to show you today is going to be the basics and concept of it. You can create and adjust it according to your needs. Okay. So whenever you like for your own project, you can adjust it and you can adjust the flow as well. But let's dive right into it. Uh, so first, I have a blank page where I'm going to create this configurator. I can see the left part is, is sticky. The slider is sticky and it's kind of changing like this. We have a interior slider as well. So I have a slider. Then there is a video. I think I should be able to download the video. Yes, let's download the video as well. Okay, I downloaded the video. Then again, there is the slider. So... Let's create this simple structure first. So what I will do is I have a section right here and uh, I will, let's take, actually, I, let's just use this structure that we have here. So from hero good grid, I will just create it. Let's delete the nav bar and change the background color. Make it white, nice. So I have my basic section structure, section hero, padding global, and the padding large, section large is now nested with the uh, padding global and then we have container large. So let's add this structure. So I think what I will do is I will create a grid first. On the left side, I will make the left part sticky. Uh, so let's do that. Let's take a div. 
and I need to stretch it. You can see like there is no really container here. So let's remove the container first. I will remove the container and then I will create a new class called it's configurator. So configurator, there we go, configurator or configurator wrapper. That makes more sense. Or you can call it configurator component as well. All is good. Then uh, inside configurator, I'm going to divide this into a grid. So we have a grid, column is two, row is two, let's see. Uh, I think we don't need this one. So I would delete this row right here and shift this one a little bit to the right. So now we have 1.75 and one FR. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, wow, wow. Webflow crashed, okay. I will refresh. I'm not sure what what really happened. There are a few things that you do in Webflow. It kind of crashes, but it's fine. So we don't have the uh, container that is gone. We do have padding global. I think we can have it. I might I might just reduce the padding global a little bit, like maybe 1.5, 1.5, just to make it little bit closer to the website. Then on the left side, I want the slider, which is going to be sticky. So uh, maybe I, I can have the video as well. So let's do that. I will take a div block and uh, another div block, configurator wrapper. This I will call configurator, configurator left or configurator right. I think I can just, mm, actually I can, I should do it a little bit different way. Configurator wrapper, instead of making this a grid, I will make the child a grid. So I'm just kind of thinking about the structure that can happen. So configurator item or configurator block. Let's name it like that. Configurator block. The block I'm going to divide into grid now. And I'm going to delete one of the rows. Make this 1.75 like this and inside this I am going to add a div block all this configurator block left and this another div I will call this configurator box right now I want to uh, basically because we will have fields here so I think I should put everything inside a form first so let us take a form block and inside the form and just paste all the things like this deleted all the fields for now. So now we have a form. I can call this configurator form like this and configurator form uh, blocks. Configurator form wrapper. I can leave some of the classes just for the sake of this session so that we are we can finish this particular uh, chapter basically creating the configurator. But yeah, let's uh, now add a slider let's uh, take a div block and add all these fields here so what div block is already there so the first in the first block i think uh, i can add okay i do we don't really need this one for the configurator again you know concept is going to be the same uh, i am going to create a simpler version of what we have here so we have model model 3 and model long range so let's maybe create uh, in this way so we will have a heading first let's make the body color white black sorry black okay where is this coming from section hero let's make it black there we go model 3 uh, this can be h2 then we can have uh, a few text here as well like this then let's let's create this part right here the first one call this configurator block inputs inputs wrapper I will add one RAM on the both side or I can add a spacer as well then uh, uh, let's let's create a simpler version of this. So I will take an input label, 
and call this wheel uh, wheel drives or maybe yeah real wheel drives uh, model 3 range okay so maybe I should call this one model type to make it easier to understand then now our one of our goal will be to kind of manage all the things from Webflow CMS directly so I'm going to create all these things in Webflow CMS first so let's let's actually add margin top here first so margin top margin large uh, yeah this is better now inside CMS I will create three collections again to make it easier for the clients to manage it uh, first collection I'm going to call it model type so model type there we go model type will include the name and the slug will be there and I will just click on create collection we are going to use CMS for the uh, fees for these uh, selection like options so let's create this save changes okay now we are going to create another collection we will call it paint because we have a paint option right here and let's create one more which is wheels so wheels nice uh, now let's add all of this in there uh, for, for each of the collection I'm going to create one more field and call it basically we can it can be a text field or it can be a select field the purpose of this field is going to be pre-select some of the colors when the page loads so if a user is landing on the page we want some colors to be pre-selected already because it's going to be CMS we we can like add a text field here to kind of pre-select it so I will just type here checked question mark and uh, I will show you the purpose of this particular field really uh, like soon but let's create checked checked here as well save and one more check here as well so check 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 save connection let's add a uh, wheel type so wheels I will add okay photon wheels and nova wheels cool so let's add the first one and call it photon and we will create the another one and call it Nova again this can be done without CMS as well but when we are doing it with CMS it's kind of gets it, it gets very easy for the for the client to manage it now paint we can add three of them so let's go with red uh, blue and white maybe so paint red uh, yep blue and white there we go wheels we have two then model types I can go with uh, real wheel drives and all wheel drives yeah so rear wheel drives and all wheel drives all wheel track there we go so now you can see that we have uh, these three collections and I just need to embed those collections here so first I will take a collection wrapper and I will call this configurator uh, configurator input collection there we go let's connect the first one to model types and we should we should see two of them which is cool configurator uh, input collection input list there we go and here I can add checkbox or a radio button sorry so that I can select at least one and I can uh, choose the value to be name like this and you can see that we have now two options coming right from the CMS now what I want you to uh, know is we we are not going to use the Webflow's, Webflow's native uh, checkboxes here or radio buttons here we are going to create our own I will tell you uh, how it can, it, can, it can work basically how it will be done uh, but the thing is you can use Webflow's own native radio boxes as well 
Uh, the reason I think I'm doing it because of the value. So the value here, Webflow, how Webflow does it is like it it actually send the value as true. So for example, all we drive is equal to true instead of the value itself. Uh, and I cannot really set dynamic values from here as well. You can see. Uh, so I think I need to create a custom radio button here. So for that, what I can do is I can simply publish the site first, take the HTML code of the radio button and then use that instead. Let's publish the site, open this here. Insert product configurator, there we go. And let's take the radio code. So we can take it from here. Edit as HTML, copy the HTML code. And what I will do is inside the collection, I will add an embed. You can also take a custom element, but I think uh, embed is much easier here because there are so many attributes in there. So let's take an embed, add it like this. So we have to maybe understand it better. We have input like this, then we have a span, then label and input is right here. So we don't really need this class, which is Webflow's class. We don't really need that. Or we can, we can have that actually to style our element. We can use that uh, as a template. So name is name is going to be wheel. Sorry, model type. So this is a name of our radio button. ID can be model type like this, or we don't. We are not going to really use ID. Uh, data name again. Uh, you can skip the data name. This is something that Webflow uses, I think, for accessibility or something. You can keep it as well if you want to make it work exactly like Webflow. Uh, class, I'm going to leave it like this so that Webflow can use it. Then we have a span uh, with the value right here and we are going to replace the value dynamically with the name like this. Save it and now you can see it looks exactly the same just like this. Uh, but there is going to be one change that I'm going to do here which is going to be value of the input. So value of a radio instead of this, I'm going to add a dynamic value which is slug of, uh, of, the, of this collection. So when we have slug in there, it will set the value to this right here in the small letters. So Nova, Photon, model types, it will set it to all-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive like this. So once we have it, I can, I can, if I want, I can style it just like this as well. So let's, let's try to style it as well. So I think I don't really want to take a lot of time styling this. So maybe just, I will just style this one um, input. Let's see if we have a radio button or not here. So form radio, we have it. Radio icon. There we go. And I can give the same class to our embed as well. So input radio, where is class? Form radio. Icon, there we go. Then label is going to be form radio label. And this is going to be form radio itself. So I can add the same classes to Webflow as well. Form radio. This will be form radio. We have form radio icon and we want form radio label here. So let's add a class of form radio label. Just like this. There we go. So basically you can use Webflow's element to kind of style uh, your custom element and this is how it, it will work. Let's see if we can see how this will look in the custom state. Let's publish this change for now so that we can see it. Refresh. I think it's fine for the for the session. Like we, it, it kind of works. So let's remove the Webflow's one, and we will keep the uh, default ones there. Sorry, we'll keep the embed ones, the custom one that we created. Remove the Webflow Webflow one. There we go. I will call this form input embed. There we go. Now let's create the second. Uh, one which is the second option which is paint 
So let's create that. It is centered. I think I can I can try to be closer to the design this time. Block. I think I will give uh let's create maybe six fifty VH. Let's give this the height of fifty VH. And create another block like this. In this block, I'm going to remove uh, the margin top classes. We don't need that. Maybe a line center we will add here. Line center. Oh, okay. We don't need that. We need uh, maybe call this. What do we have here for the class name? Configurator input collection. Sorry, configurator block right. Mm, yep, and we can use the same here as well. Configurator block right is center. Let's center the text. Let's let's also center the elements like this, and we can add some space between the label. So on label, let's add that. Maybe 24, or maybe 20. It is fine. Some space here. Sorry, guys, I'm not really trying to focus a lot on the design, but I'm trying to create what we can here. Okay, so we have these set boxes. So for this, I need to disconnect first, so disconnect all the uh, custom like CMS values. And then reconnect it, reconnect the collection to a different one. This time it will be paints. So you can see we have three paints now. And now I will go here again, collect, uh, connect the name, and the value will be slug. As to that, the name this time is going to be paint. And uh, paint data name can also be paint. Let's see, I think I might be missing something here. ID can be paint as well. Paint type is radio. I think we should be good. There we go. And uh, maybe we can. I think this, this should be good. Like this. Let's, for now, let's just keep it maybe the one like we have in the top. So we have this model type we have paint and let's add one more thing which is wheels so again i'm going to duplicate the configurator block like this and call this wheels again disconnect this connect this to wheels we should have two options. Nice. Connect the value to the name. Uh, sorry, the text to the name and value to the slug. Change the name to wheel type. There we go. ID is also going to be wheel type. Yeah, no wrong. This is the ID. Data name is equal to wheel type. And we are good. Just like this. Here, I think I missed one thing, which is data name is equal to model type. There you go. Yeah, so here is how we have our like basic setup. Now on the left side, let's also do this. So I think what I'm going to do is make the left side sticky uh, based on what we have uh, in the design like this. And uh, I think I can divide it into two parts. Maybe when we come to the wheels, or we can just keep it one maybe for the for this session. Yeah, let's keep it one only. I need to maybe change the structure a little bit for that. So we have configurator block, configurator wrapper. So 
So configurator wrapper, I'm going to divide it into grid and on the right side, I'm going to keep uh, all the images. So configurator, I'm just changing the structure guys a little bit. Configurator, configurator, maybe left or maybe slider wrapper. Block right. Slider wrapper, this will be input wrapper like this on the right side. And on the right side, I'm going to place all the fields that. So we have this. Let's delete this one. Put it here. Delete this one. And put it right here. Let me go. Okay, this, this is looking good. And now just I need to convert this to grid. That's it. And here we have our desired structure. One, two is fine. Cool. Maybe I can reduce the size a little bit. Yeah. Let's do that. On the image, I will just put some padding in there. So four ramps on each side. Maybe two ramps on each side should be enough. There we go. Now, uh, what I will do is on the left side, I will create a slider. So here is my slider. Let's call this configurator slider, just like this. Give this height to auto. There we go. Then we have configurator slider underscore mask. And this will be configurator slider slide. We want two same slides. So let's have first one and add an image in there. Now we can use this image block as well in Webflow. Uh, and we can create our custom image block as well. I'm going to use a custom image block because of the reason when uh, actually uh, Webflow, when we add a dynamic, when, when we add an image to Webflow, so for example, if I just open this image in new tab, then download this image. Let's download this image, add it to our Webflow site. Let me show you why I'm going to use a uh, Webflow in a custom image block and replace this one. Replace this image with this right here. Call this image. There we go. Width will be 100%. Uh, ratio will be 1 ratio 1 and then fill will be covered. So you can see for example I have this image right here and what Webflow does it, it kind of optimizes it and creates different variant which is responsive images by Webflow, right? It kind of creates different uh, variants of the image. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to just replace one image URL and not both of them, like not the optimized version of the images. That is why I just want to use a custom element so that I can replace one URL instead of two of them. But again, it's completely on you how many URLs you want to replace. Uh, and how it is going to work is basically we are going to replace image URLs as someone selects the option. So that is how it is going to work. Uh, I will jump into detail as well. So, for, but for now, let's take a custom element. Give this the same uh, same class as this slider image. Then uh, this will be IMG. And uh, let's upload three images as placeholders first. So placeholders, I'm going to do, I'm going to upload these images. This is the second one. And this is the third one right here. Let's save the image as well. There we go. Save image, save image. So the first image is this, uh, second image and third image. So the first image, what I will do is I will simply go here, copy the image URL, and then add it as a custom attribute, SRC, like this. There we go. You can see the images here with us. We will duplicate the slider just like this. And on the second slide, I'm going to add link to the second one. These are going to be placeholder guys, so that, that when the page is loaded, it's not empty. SRC again, change it. And then we have the third one, where we have the third image. Nice. Make sure to add alt text as well, like this. You can add alt here. So alt and define your images if you want, uh, but yeah. 
for this particular session i'm going straight away into the concept how it is going to work now let's let's uh, open the first slider so here we have slides let's first maybe publish our site and see where we are with it right now and also i'm i think we don't need section padding i removed it let's create some space in between so gap is going to be uh, maybe 24 rams maybe 40 rams yeah and i'm going to give a little bit more space to the image maybe or maybe i can add some padding in there Okay, put a padding in. Let's maybe make this transparent. Oh no, the background is coming from the image, the slider itself, not from the image. So let's remove the background. There we go. Now this should be better. Slider uh, arrow and slider arrow. And let's make them black color. No, no, like this. X primary. And there we go. This should be good. Uh, maybe add a little bit of more padding to the images. Yeah. Okay. I think we have a very basic structure here. I will publish this and show you basically how, how we are going to pull this off. First, we need to create a collection in CMS and we are going to call it combinations okay so i can call it tesla combinations combinations there we go and hit create collection <laughs> and what i need to do is i need to create all the possible combinations uh for our tesla so we have selected for example three paints then we have two wheels and uh, we have this like long range and short range uh but all wheel drive and sorry all wheel drive and four wheel drive all wheel drive and rear wheel drive. Uh, but those, I think, doesn't require image change. So the total number of combinations will be three into uh, two, which is six, okay? So what I will do is I will go inside the CMS and start creating all the possible combinations. Uh, if you have maybe more than 60 combinations, you can ask ChatGPT to create it for you and give it in a CSP format. So definitely you can do that. But let's go to test the combinations and start creating it. So for example, the easiest way to do that will be red and wheel type, red photon, you can call it. So let's start with red and call it red photon, like this. Then uh, we have red Nova. So this is our first combination. Then we will have blue, blue photon. Eight, then blue nova, and then red, blue, and white. Two more, white photon, and white nova. There we go. So these are all the combinations that we have. Now we need to add images, three image fields inside. Them uh, inside them. So first will be we will call it image one, which will be in the slider one. Then we will have image two. So you will see where I'm going when I'm adding these and image three. So basically, I am going to upload the images for these three combinations in these fields. So uh, one good way to do that is you can kind of drag the images and put it directly here like this. So I'm going to just do that. Uh, let's go to Tesla really quick and first open all the combinations for this one. So red, this is the first image. Let's drag it here. I think it is red Nova, my bad, sorry. So red photon, so let's open the red photon. Right here, take the first image. In some websites you can directly drag it, but Tesla is not allowing it for some reason. I think there is a selector none property applied. Then take the second image and drag and drop it directly to Webflow like this. Take the third image. So I'm going to quickly do this. See, that is why I did not want you to create a lot of options. It's definitely a, a good way to do this, but again, it's a, time, a bit of time consuming in the very first time you do it, uh, the very first time you do it. Now let's go to Nova Wheels. 
아, 힘드는 거. 어, 방금 this. 다른 말이 좀 더. And I think I did not open the first particular one. 네, 이거. Oh. It is not opening the first image for me for some reason. There we go, now it worked. Image one. Image two. And image three. And this is image two. And this is image three. Maybe let's just add blue one more and then we can add the rest later. I don't want any everyone to get bored here. <laughs> so let's do this. Blue photon. So let's select the photon means. Close other images. Open this image. Second image and third image. By the way, if you didn't know this trick, this is also a very cool trick to add images in Webflow. You can even do this with Figma as well. You know, like the image field, just select and drop it directly in Webflow. Uh, it works. Pexels.com, Figma, it works with all of them. Blue Photon is updated. Now I go to Blue Nova and quickly update that as well. Image one, image two, and image three. Nice. Now what we will do is we will create a hidden collection. Again, for the sake of this stream, I'm going to make this collection visible. There we go. Let's add a let's have a collection. I'm I'm not adding any classes to it. It's just fine. And I'm going to connect this collection with Tesla combinations. So you can see we have six combinations. And inside this, I can take a custom element. We want to take an embed, but you might be considering like why not a custom element? Let me tell you why. We want image URLs that we have uploaded inside in text format or some kind of dynamic format. So when we take a div block here you can see that I cannot really access the image URLs that right from here. I can take image and connect it with that. Like I can maybe connect it like this, image one, image two, image three. But the thing is, let's say we have 60 combinations. It is going to make the page very heavier uh, if we have those images. Like uh, they will need to lo get loaded and all. So there's an easier way to do that. We don't really want to show these images. They are just going to be here for, for the sake of just being present on the page. Instead of that, there is a easier way to do that. And that is taking an embed, having a text uh, right here, and then adding the value of this text as image URL. So I can simply close the text block like this. So I can have three text, image one, image two, and image three. And there we go. Now you will see that I will have those as text. For, for, some, for some reason, the text element is not visible in Webflow inside designer. So I can maybe convert it into a div block so that you can see it. So let's add a div block, div, div, and a div so that you can see it. There we go. Now you can see that this is the tick that we are going to use. You can see all the URLs of all the uh, combinations that we have. So first combination, second combination, third and fourth, we can upload more of course, but here it is how, how it looks inside Webflow. Uh, now, the main concept, how it is going to work. How it is going to work is basically with some custom code, we are going to uh, fetch these combinations based on what is selected here and then take the image URL and replace it inside three images that we have. As simple as that, okay? So for example, uh, let's say, maybe I should open Excel draw and there it will be easier to understand. Uh, so for example, how it is working, 
let's say I have selected, let's say I have selected, for example, white, Nova, and all-wheel drive, okay? Uh, for this example, we, because we don't really have variants for all-wheel drives, we won't really need it. We need white and Nova. So let's say I have selected white and Nova. So the ID will be something like this. We will create a ID white Nova 1, okay? Or a selector like white Nova 1. Then if, we, if someone selects, uh, let's say white and photon, so we will create a variable called white uh, photon 1. This is basically why I'm writing one here because we have three images. So these will be the IDs or selectors we are going to give to those images. So white photon 2 and then white photon 3. Just like this. There you go. So we have three different selector or IDs you can say. Uh, if someone selects red, same thing will happen. So we want to give these IDs to uh, our these like hidden collection so that our code can fetch it based on the right combination that user is creating, okay? Uh, so once these IDs are selected, so for example, someone selects these options, we will construct this ID, we will construct this ID, and based on this construction, we are going to kind of get uh, access to, uh, sorry, we, we are going to get all the URLs from the hidden collection and play, replace it with the with the placeholder URL that we have there. Or we are going to replace it with the slider. So if someone selects, for example, white photon, then we will get these three images. So this is how it is going to work. And uh, for that, I have a very simple code that I, again, I'm not a JavaScript pro. So I use chat GPT. I explained him uh, at everything with examples. It, it's always a good idea to explain uh, first explain that chat GPT what you want and then give a HTML example. Like if, uh, if I select, for example, just like what I did here, if I select for white photon, then it should go to these three elements, take the URL and replace the image uh, with that. Okay. So let's take our code first and I will add our code to this page right here. Sorry, script, not a style. C R I P D scripts. There we go. And close it. Now I, I do want to uh, show you how the code is working. And there are a few features that I have additional features that I've added. Uh, first of all, I've created a, a attribute like codes so that it's easier for you to manage it. Again, it's completely on you how you want to alter this code. You can take this code, update it, add all new features, you know, completely on you how you want to do it. So first we are kind of defining all the elements like the input selector, the form, uh, the final image that is going to be replaced. So these are the final image. Then we have the image source, uh, where like image source is the ID I was talking about or the selector that we are going to apply on the image URLs that we have in bottom of our page. Then we have uh, the function like updating function. So how we are going to update the image. There is a function defined for that. You can see that we are defining a source key as I mentioned here. So this is the source key and it kind of finds uh, the matched source uh, automatically. Okay. Then we have a function uh, that is uh, that gathers the selection, basically what the user is selecting when they are clicking on it. And then we have a function to find the matching source. We have a save selection. So we are, where we are saving it right now, you can save it in cookies. The reason is when I refresh the page, I'm not sure if Tesla is having that feature, but I know that many of uh, you might want to have that feature. So I think yeah, Tesla is also having that. If I select red and refresh the page, I think it will rem remember my choice. There we go. It is in red right now. So I am also saving this choices in local storage. You can save this to cookie as well. You just need to ask again ChatGPT to change the code uh, as you want. Then we have a load selection function. So once the page is loaded, it will load the uh, your preference selection basically. So here you can see that it kind of uh, get it's, it's kind of first getting the selector and then getting the value from the storage. And you can see here, local storage that item is based on the storage key and then it is just applying the values. Uh, so it's kind of a simple code. You can go through it uh, definitely and ask ChatGPT to alter it for your own need basically. Yeah, so that is what we have and now we are going to just define all the things inside webflow we just need to add a few attributes so first of all i will add uh fs configurator element is equal to form to our form block so let's find our form block this is our form block 
and add it right here. Configurator element is equal to form. Then I need to uh, define the input. So these are my inputs and I can give my input a name as well. So here I will simply go here in the input because we are using a custom input element. I This is how we add attributes to it. So the first one is model type. Model type, just like this. The second one is going to be the paint. So let's add input is equal to paint like this. Then uh, we can add wheels. Wheels, just like this, there we go. FS configurator input uh, is equal to wheels. And you see that I'm adding this in inputs, not in the labels. So this is how I'm going to select these now. I'm just making sure the values are connect here. So it's connected to value. I can also connect the ID. Uh, ID ID can also be unique. We are not really going to use it, but it's just a good thing, you know, like have unique IDs for all the inputs. So let's connect it with the name as well. And slug. So now I think we have unique IDs here. Yep, uh, all good. Now what what I will do is let's say I want to select pre-select all wheel drive white and Nova in like when the page loads because we have this here like a red here. So let's pre-select red and Nova wheels. I think those are Nova wheels. Yeah, so red and Nova wheels. So what I will go, I will go to CMS, go to paint and inside red, I will just type here checked. You can again use a select field as well. In the wheels, I'm going to write here checked in Nova. So checked. And in the model type, let's make all wheel drives checked. There we go. Now, uh, you can see that it's not really working right now for that because I need to kind of add checked right here. So let's add it in the very last checked. So you can see now all wheel drive is selected. <laughs> Again, this is a cool trick you can use to pre-select CMS, uh, CMS connected um, check boxes or, or radio buttons. There we go. And checked. You can see that it is automatically selected correctly. And now let's publish the site and uh, it, it will not work right now because we have we haven't right now defined these uh, image URLs, but let's open the site and see how it looks right now. And you can see the items are pre-selected right here. I have also added uh, like troubleshooting options. So if you are selecting something and it's not available, you can see that uh, it is kind of showing things in console log, which you can disable if you want. You just need to comment out uh, the console log, uh, like in the code, you just need to comment out where you have console log. So you can simply comment on like this. There you go. Uh, but again, let's go back for a second and then uh, uh, let's add selectors here as well. For this, the selector will look something like, so we have configurator, we have final image and source image. So first let, uh, let's add the source image or image source. This is going to be our image source. And image source, as I mentioned, we want this code to be applied in our image source. So here I will connect this to slug. Sorry, my bad. I have wrote it in the wrong place. Here we go, like this. Image source. 3, image source 1, uh, sorry, image source 2, and image source 1. Uh, and in front of 1, we also need to add, because we want to kind of, this is going to be the, the, like, the selector inside the images. So we need to add the slug in there first, and then with a dash 1, 2, and 3. So I kind of missed that a little bit. Let's add it. So 1, 2, and three, so slug equal to three. Let's save this, open the page again, and I want to show you how the HTML looks like after this. Let's refresh. It will still not work, 
but I can know what is wrong with the flow slider. Uh, okay, so if I go here, you can see that uh, if I if you see on the right side of your screen, FS configurator image source and the value is blue nova dash one, blue nova dash two, blue nova dash three. So when I select blue nova, it constructs a key which is blue nova. It constructs our code constructs a key white photon or blue nova. Then it kind of finds all the image URLs inside blue nova one, blue nova two, and blue nova three, and place that inside the final image, uh, which is slider. So we are going to now define the final image. So for that, we can add a, another attribute to our final images, and we will call it configurator final image one. Then we need final image two and final image three. So final image one, final image two, and final image three. So I think we have defined all of the uh, all of the attributes, and now our code should work. When if there is no combination available, it won't change the it won't change the image. Uh, this is just a troubleshooting, or you know, I just added that so that you know it doesn't uh, kind of you know mess up or something. But let's see. Publish the site. Here we go. And just wanted to make sure that I have everything correctly set up. Configurator image source image one image two image three. Cool. It should now work. And if it don't work, then can have a look into it. I hope I have added this here as well. Configurator wheel. Okay. Paint model type. Let's open console, refresh. Okay, so when I'm selecting this image one not updated. Okay, uh, there is one problem. You can see uh, I opened console and that is the good part uh, of this code that I have added everything inside the console. So you can see when I'm selecting all wheel drive, it is looking for no image source found for Here's the key, all wheel drive dash blue dash nova dash three. So we don't really have all wheel drive variants. So what I need to do is just need to go in Webflow and remove FS configurator input model type from here. If we have those variants, then only we kind of want to add that particular uh, attribute in there, but we don't need that now. So now it will create the right uh, kind of right code, right source code, it was stating it the incorrect way. And you can also see that it also saved the selection. So when I reload the page, it kind of works. You can also check it in the application. If you go to local storage, you can see that uh, it kind of changes here. So I select blue, it kind of saves in their local storage. Red, Photon, or Nova, it kind of saves in their preference. When I reload this, you can see now this is working. So we have Nova wheels, red, and let's close it and check it out. Photon wheels, and here we go, it is working. And uh, image two, this is working as well. Blue, let's make it blue. I hope you uploaded that, yes, there we go. This is also uploaded, nice. White is not there, so see, it is not working. So if you go to console, it will just give you the image source not found, but it won't like fail it, like uh, it won't bug it out. So you can see when I select white here, it says, white nova to not found image 3 is not updated so what we will do is quickly go to cms and uh, update the white model as well so go to tesla combinations and upload the white variants now you might be considering guys like why are we uh, using this um, method the thing is I, I was i actually have created this configurator for one of our clients i couldn't find a solid uh, a tool you know that can kind of help us create that there might be tools out there that will help you create this uh you know like using the embed or something but it was not it was it it is not of course free you know tools like this are not of course free and at the same time you might not be able to customize those external tools as you want so using this simple method or using this simple concept where first you take all the image URL in your page, just like this as a plain text, then replace the plain text with the image source based on the combination. Using this simple concept, you can create configurators in Webflow. Now it's completely upon you how you want to customize it. For example, you can add five more options. You can add checkboxes. Let's say, for example, 
if I go with the interior option as well, the, the flow will be a little bit different. If I click here, you can see the image is also changing. So I need to add that logic as well. So it completely on, it's completely on you how you want the flow to be. If I click on black interior, now you can see the image, uh, sorry, the wheels and the paints option are gone. So there needs to be a logic behind it. When I click on interior, it will show interiors images only. Uh, or interior slide, it should change the slide itself. So again, completely on you how you want to manage it, but you can follow the same concept which I am doing here. Uh, okay, so let's quickly add the, left. this is added. Let's add the photon as well. Go to here, then uh, white on Nova. We have added photon, let's add white Nova. One, two, and three. Maybe we can uh, like cover other methods as well, like the image cropping method, where you kind of get cropped version of the image and you are kind of overlapping it. Uh, that could be a way to do that. So you can create, let's say, collections of, for example, wheel type. I'm just uh, kind of thinking it loud so for example we have wheels inside nova wheels we will just add uh, wheels only wheels image of nova and only photons image uh, like wheel image of photon variant then when, with paint we will just add the body top body part for white blue and red one two three image again that way we might not need to upload a lot of variants like we might not need to do the permutation and combination thing that we were doing so for example if you have let's say four different variants and four different colors, four different wheel types, it adds up to four into four into four, which is I think 64 if I'm not wrong. So uh, it, it's kind of, you know, like it's a one-time thing, but it works really well. You know, I I don't really see a lot of lag in there. Right now we are just replacing one image source here, uh, but if you want, you can upload, like you can have two different image source as well, one for mobile to optimize it more. Again, concept will be completely same, uh, but let's publish it and now check it out. What I'm going to do is, and uh, maybe in the next stream, if we, let me know if you want to see uh, how we can, how to create a Stripe checkout using a low code method, uh, we can use make, let me know if you want to see that. So we can convert this whole thing into a checkout as well. So for example, what I will do is I will, uh, let's say I have this, and just for this, I can add a submit button here. So let's maybe add a submit. There is submit. Form, form button. Is it called form button? Yeah, form button. There we go. So I can maybe have here reserve. Something like this. There we go. So let's publish it. So once you submit this form, uh, your submission will go and create a checkout in Stripe. And it will also get you all the fields that you have selected, the user has selected. So let's open it again and let's try it. Now it should work. Publish. Uh, do we have all the variants? White Nova, white photon. I think five, six. We do have six of them. There we go. Yeah. It took a little bit of time, but it's working. There we go. And photon wheels. There we go. So it's working well. Like this. And I think the images are also cached when you load them. So it's kind of faster the second time you do it. There we go. It's working seamlessly actually. And if I click on reserve, I think I have not styled the success and everything, but there we go. Thank you. Your submission has been received. You can redirect user to a new page as well. But if I go to site settings, I should be able to uh, do this here. Let's go to forms. And there we go. Model type, all wheel, paint is white, wheel type is Nova. So that's how you do it. I think 
this this is a good way to do it we might try to do it with webflow variants i am not 100% sure if we can create something like this with webflow variants as well yeah i might have to try it but I, as far as i remember i i went with webflow e-commerce and there was some things missing and that's why i kind of considered using a custom form and creating this I do want to create a second part of this session where we are going to connect this with a Stripe checkout. So let's say when I click on reserve, it will take me to the Stripe checkout page. It will also show me what I have selected. I have selected all wheel drive, I have selected red color and I have selected wheels. So it will kind of submit all the data in the back end as well. And I, sh I will be able to reserve it. I think we will use Stripe and Airtable for that. And for automation, I'm going to use make. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, how we are going to do it. I'm going to share a Notion link with the code so you can use it if you want. You can have a look into it. I will also create this as a clonable and share a read-only link in the same Figma file as well. So let me do that really quick. There we go. Create a bookmark. I can share that. Once it came out, once I kind of tested out this concept I was having, I was really happy that it's it's working actually really well like this. Uh, and I don't have to worry about finding any third party tool that will kind of create this. You can even add uh, more fields, right? For example, let's do this and call this personal details. Delete the collection we have here. And I can call this on field wrapper. Inside this, I can add, oops, I think I deleted the wrong one. Yeah, here I can have on field wrapper. Then I can have a small labels like this. Name, let's add an input. name there we go maybe all the labels should have 0 0.25 and these labels should have 0 0.5 or one there we go so now when someone kind of feels in this name email and their phone number, you can have anything you want. So it will kind of, you know, like submit more things in the form for you. You know, uh, some some of the clients might want to go with a simpler, like they just want to kind of uh, pre-order something. So I have used the similar flow in a pre-order flow as well. So they did not really wanted any uh, checkout flow in that particularly, but they just wanted to collect user interest. They will send the link to selected people. So for that, this is more than enough. But if you want a Stripe integration, then in that case, you have to do a bit more and set up a Stripe checkout. There is a video from Alex, I think. So Stripe checkout in Webflow. But uh, let me show you. There we go. Implement Stripe on Webflow. So you can check out this video. This is how uh, he actually goes through how you can set up a Stripe checkout. But because Alex is a Webflow pro, he's... Sorry, JavaScript Pro. So he's using, uh, I think, some th like setting up servers in the back and then kind of writing code of it. Uh, I'm going to create another way. So you can use this to implement a Stripe checkout. I'm going to create a different version of it, which is going to be using Make so that we don't really have to write a lot of code. Uh, so it's going to be a combination of Make and a little bit of JS just in the front end and not in the back end. So you don't need to set up the backend servers. So yeah, I think, uh, I hope this session was helpful guys. Sorry, I'm not able to style all of this again for, because you know, like creating the whole thing definitely needs more time, a little bit more time, but feel free to follow the same concept and create your own configurator. Okay, so that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments if you have, and let us know if you want to see the next part of this uh, video where 
I'm going to integrate this form with Stripe checkout so that you can create a reservation checkout, also get all the user preferences in the backend. Let us know if you want to see that in the backend as well. I hope you are having a great day. And this is Harshit Agrawal signing off. Bye-bye.